Well, OK, really, a week goes by now without letters from all you Quo fans, right, threatening mayhem if we don't have the band on the programme. So, in answer to so many questions, it's a pleasure for me to welcome to Whistle Test Francis Rossi and Richard Parfit. Welcome. Hi, Rob. How are you doing? It's very Thank nice you. to see you. Particularly at this time, Francis, which is a milestone for the band, isn't it? Fifteen years in existence yesterday. Yeah, since the, uh, since the first gig of the band. We always take them the first gig. It's probably a bit longer, but it sounds a bit too much to say that. From the first gig was... About 15 years in a terrible... The cricket club. Cricket club, yeah. Dulwich. Nuff's Dead, working men's club. One of those touches, I'm afraid. <laughs> got me beige, I've got me beige. Got we've got, we've uh, found <clears throat> a marvellous photo, actually, that comes from 62, around that time, from Butlins. Yeah, Four good looking boys. <laughs> Everybody goes this there. is about the time that you joined the band. <clears throat> I wasn't quite in when that picture. That's the one up the Telegraph pole or something. No, that's the one. No, it's on the one, is it? Ah, that's the one. Yeah. Gibson, that <laughs> yeah. Mother Kelly's. Look, I see? was watching when that picture was <clears throat> took, actually. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. You got booed out of there. Yeah, I know. How did you get involved with the band at that point, then? Well, I was sort of. I was with another band down there, a little kind of trio thing, you know. Oh, huh. no. Say no more. was it? No, I won't tell you the name of it. It's a terrible name. And, uh, I'd sort of got pally with everybody there and I was writing to the bass player at the time, believe it or not, after we left for about a year. And then the manager at the time, he was a plumber, good looking bloke though, <laughs> and uh, he that. said, do you want to join? Because we needed another voice, believe it or not. And ever since then I've had a terrible problem with singing in the studio, so I was never this voice, but... Uh, you know, that was his I mean, the band needed a voice at the time, didn't yeah. In the gas showroom, he told us. <laughs> it's true, underneath the gas showroom, he said, you need a voice in this band. Well, the contract's blowing down Lambeth <laughs> Walk. <laughs> yeah, he used to yeah. drop them everywhere. We've had some time. So how, how did you first get involved in the, in the business? I mean, lead up to match the Because I know you were working with Madeline Bell just yeah. before. Yeah, we had all that was been Richard with us. We had to get, I mean, to get a gig was amazing to have a gig. You know, we had to do a, a sort of a solely type set. That was the time when it was all... And uh, we used to do gigs back in people. We did Tommy Quickly, mm -hmm. uh, Guy Darrell, and we did Madeline Bell. Mm -hmm. And she was amazing to work with. She's like really. She came in and said, "Well, down in the gas showrooms again, under the, in the basement." And she said, "What you got? I'll, I'll do whatever you've got." You know, and she used to do numbers with yeah. her. We were doing a kind it. of a, a soul set at the mm -hmm. time, really. And uh, she fancied <laughs> doing all of that soul set, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's what we did. And we went around the working men's clubs up more up Manchester, you know. And it was great fun, actually. She was really good. Yeah. So how many stabs did you have before Matchstick Man? Um, many singles. It was I Have Nothing. Hurdy <laughs> 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 Gurdy Men. Hurdy uh, Gurdy Men. Uh, that's about three, I think. Yeah. And then Matchstick Men sort of went... <laughs> there was a trough after that as well, wasn't there? Yeah. A uh, what? A trough. You yeah. <laughs> hit hard times through all... Oh, 69. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure did. It was just one of them things, I think. It was a good job it did, because yeah. I don't suppose we'd be where we are. Mm. Saying it. Is that right? I suppose so, yeah. That, yeah, was, yeah. that was around 1969, mm. late 69. Got really unhealthy for us, <coughs> particularly. Yeah. Different whole business. Couldn't I think work well. anywhere. Yeah. Everybody seemed, the whole business seemed to be flat. There seemed to be a, it was a summer. It was a summer. <laughs> it's mm. good, isn't it? Not really. No. It was a summer, and uh, all these gigs, everyone said, oh, the gigs are going broke, everyone's gone away. The usual stuff, when you can't get work. Everybody's on holiday, that's what it is. Sorry, so many people split. I just flashed me badge, it sounds rude. <laughs> Yeah. And all these bands were splitting up and we didn't know what to do, so we just kept rehearsing in this pub. We, th we still thought we were wonderful. So it's, you know, wonderful, yeah. aren't we? Because talking oh, about yeah. the, the business, Francis, you know, I mean, a lot of people are saying at the moment, me included from time to time, that the Stop business it. isn't at its most healthy right now. I mean, has it changed? I mean, have you noticed an enormous change since you've been working? I don't know, it seems, we seem detached a little bit now because you get, you get out of the thing of being, um, when, you're, when you're a club band or when you're into a club thing, you seem more in touch with it, I think. Mm. This is why you, when you get a new wave, everyone says, oh, this new wave thing's happening, and everyone hopes it does, you know, mm. because you say it needs more, but I don't know, it's, it's difficult. I think it, yeah, it changes all the time. One can't keep up, really. Mm. One can't. <laughs> one one can't. Been on telly. Yeah. I must mention you. Thanks. It's Rick. Rick. Oh, yeah, yeah my English yeah. shirt. Yeah. Yeah. I got it off Big Kev, didn't I? Big, Big Kev. Number seven. Yeah. Or oh, Little back. Kev, I say, Adam. Yeah. Number seven. <laughs> no, no, go on, flash go on. it, flash it. Go on, look at it. Tea stain on the front. Terrific. Which one did you get it? Yeah. So listen, Rex's microphone. Because I'm going to surprise you with a piece of film as well in a second. But, but before mm -hmm. we look at that, just plans into the future now. What's happening next? Oh, we're about to do an album, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Are we? Yeah. We're thinking of doing an album. I suppose a, a British tour. We need to do so. Mm. And then we start sort of um, Japan, Australia, and Europe all over again. You know, to say what's going to happen in the future, apart from basic tours and same as what everybody does. You do an album, you do a tour, and you you go on and see what comes tomorrow. Mm. Maybe come back. Yeah, you never know. You might ask us again. He might. 
Yeah. yeah, rainy day. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's beginning to run. You must mm. link us into this because this yeah. was your first appearance, I think, on Top of oh, the Oh, not the thing at oh, Top of the Jacket. The, the, the Beatles air cut, isn't it? Pictures of Max Look at that. <laughs> that ring, got that ring? Oh, that's good, isn't it? First time on telly. Well done, but look at that. Wait a minute. <laughs> look at that. I've got to get off of here. <laughs> oh, no. Going. <laughs> so different. Oh, yeah. 